you're trying to get them in the theater. So I guess what I'm saying is you do, there, may, there might be that problem. Maybe that was it. Um, you know, um, a good possibility. Uh, maybe that's where we got limited on the distribution. I'm not sure. Maybe people are afraid of it, afraid of knowing the truth, you know? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, one thing I think is, is neat about this, uh, this movie you know, is... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Uh, okay. So one thing that I think is neat about this movie is, is that it's about a group of people who are interested in something greater than themselves. Um, so yeah. much of, of modern art seems so flat because the people don't have anything greater than themselves to live for. You hit a very, you know, that, that's a very, very good point, Luke, because um, when you see these characters, whatever their cause is, is in this, and there are many causes represented in this, and some are, or some do, stem from a personal tragedy, let's say, with Martin Henderson's character because he lost his brother, and it propelled him into getting deeper into helping save the forest. Or Andre Benjamin, um, his character Django, he specifically was in tune with uh, certain mammals and animals that were being destroyed, or, or Michelle Rodriguez as well. They had some personal stories, but at the end of the day, uh, we even had a lawyer in there that was protesting, Jennifer Carpenter. I mean, at the end of the day, they, they did all have a purpose, and it was greater than themselves. Even the police officers that were out there, their hearts, whether they were right or whether they were instructed wrongly, okay, they still had a greater purpose of putting their lives on the line. Um, yeah. So they do. And the interesting thing is what you just said is what happens at the end of this movie when people stand up and cheer or what happened when we were just, all of us were at the, in Tribeca where we had an opening in New York, a rather large opening, a lot of press there a few weeks ago to kick off the sort of multi-platform tour of this movie. About 40 cities it's coming out, and we, we hope to expand if we can get people in. Um, but um, it was interesting because it was a very, it was the Society of New York. It was called the Cinema Society, and it was a who's who of New York. And it was like, oh, how are they going to react? But we all had a sort of after party, and, and people were buzzing when they got out of there. And I heard people, and I saw people texting other people saying, you must go see this. And what people came up to me and said as I was introduced as the producer, one of the producers of this movie, was that people, every one of these people, and the thread I've heard is, I want to do something good. This makes me want to do something. This makes me want to change either what I'm doing or help change the world to be a better place. How long that feeling lasts, I cannot tell you, but I do know that that's, this evokes that. Even Harvey Weinstein, I remember, whom I don't know, um, I had the opportunity to meet him in Toronto after our screening, and, and I, he came up and, and we shook hands. He said, I, I just want you to know this is a very important film, and, and this is the kind of film that does make people want to do, do good as well. So that's, it's a thread I hear, whether you're in Hollywood or you're a society person or whether you are a protester. Uh, we've had many protesters go to it. They love it. So uh, the good news is wherever you're from, we're getting a very positive, evoking a strong emotion to do something good, make a change, get involved. And that was the intent of this movie, besides making a great movie. Mm -hmm. It seems that, that many of the protesters have an almost religious fervor for their cause. They do. I mean, if you think about, um, in the movie, you see it several times. Again, going back to one of the leads, Martin Harrison, uh, he's on that three strikes are out. And the other two strikes that he has is that they were, you know, he's been... Um, uh, put, you know, basically he's been arrested before at these protests, and it's the third strike, he was going to be put away, um, and uh, put that in there, that would be great for me, mine, thank you. And, um, you know, right now something happens, so it, it's sort of, there's a feel good at the end of that, but most of these people, they get arrested a few times, but there is that three strikes law, but they'll put themselves in the line. Not only that, but they put them, they'll put, they'll, They'll take their arms and put cement tubes around so that you have to break these cement tubes around their arms to remove them or you break their arms. Or they lay down and they get tear gas, rubber bullets, I mean, you name it, pushed in them. So there is a very strong desire here, a very, very strong cause-driven you know, 
desire here, whether it stems from personal experiences or or this is you know whatever has sparked inside of these people to go out and protest and. It's really extraordinary to watch. And the nice thing is that we had a lot of the protesters in our protest scenes that were in the riots in the battle in, battle in Seattle, in the World Trade Organization riots in 1999. And many of the protesters came to New York opening. Of course, many of them were in Seattle. Uh, and to hear them and that we got their blessing and that we tried to keep it um, real, and tell the real story. I mean, Stuart took a lot of composites of people. He had the news anchor of people. He had, you know, all kinds. He had the mayor. It's based on the mayor, Ray Liotta. Uh, you know, this is quite a feat, and he was able to accomplish it um, that way. But um, it, it does take an extraordinary backbone to do what they do and to risk themselves like that. And. I don't know how many people in America are willing to do that, but we got to meet a lot of them during the filming and at the premieres that we had. So that was really um, exciting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking in, in regular life, it's people who have, who have passion who are so much more interesting than people who don't have passion. Uh, very much so. Um, I mean, for me, what I do every day, I get up and just, I live my life on passion. However, it is not the same passion that these protesters have. And um, I can tell you that, interestingly enough, I'll, I'll just give you a, a short, interesting anecdote, that many of the stars that were in this movie went from driving big SUVs and Mercedes to Priuses. <laughs> So I know it's changed everybody on this set. Uh, that I can say, and we hope the same thing will happen when people are watching. And every time I've been in that theater and every time I walk out, I'm hearing it. So, you know, we need to get this movie out there. One way or the other, uh, we need to get more people in. My thought is if we can't get more P&A, we're hoping that there will be a nomination and through there we get a resurgence of, of interest of people in the seats. It is a movie that should be should be seen. Should be seen by colleges and high schools and all that. Uh, I feel that passionate about it. What is your greatest motivating passion? Uh, I believe my greatest motivating passion is to do more movies that affect people in a positive way. Um, or thought, it doesn't always have to be positive, but thought provoking. There's ways to do it. My next project is I just acquired the copyright with my partner Mike Bolin, who owns Voyager Group in Pittsburgh. He's a very uh, renowned family. His grandfather started Federated Mutual Fund. Very, very, very prominent family. We just, just got. Um, Staunch Republican <laughs> family. Uh, they just got the um, we just got the rights, and we just uh, paid for the rights, uh, big payment for the sort of the prequel to the Passion of the Christ. It's Mary, Mother of the Christ, and it's a project that I'm doing with MGM. I'm going to be doing that in Morocco with Dune Films that did the Gladiator and Alexander, all that. And I hired the original line producer, producer. Uh, from the Passion of the Christ, the production team, uh, and um, the same writer of the Passion of the Christ. And that's another, what I believe will defy demographics. Um, now, with a, a much, MGM is much, uh, offering a much bigger scale, it's, you know, because the predecessor is the biggest selling movie in the history of independent cinema, Passion of the Christ. Right. So, uh, <laughs> we have, we, 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 it was able, it had the ability for me to, to acquire the rights and raising the financing on that because I had a very good comp. It's like real estate. You know, you have a great, you know, phenomenal analysis, bank analysis, comps, and we had a real good predecessor there. So that's sort of the, the next thing, which is also a passion project for me, um, without question. Would you be able to effectively produce a movie with an ideological point of view the opposite of your own, say, uh, American Carol? Yeah. Um, not that one. Um, not that one. Probably not. 